thank you very much, Connor. I'm sure Joelle would wish us to say potpourri. <laughs> now, um, right, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to start off this morning with uh, rectal prolapse. I have no disclosures. And uh, what we're talking about, of course, is really two things, the recto-rectal uh, intersusception and the full uh, external rectal prolapse. Uh, really a continuum of the same, uh, the same problem. Uh, dwelling on the etiology, of course, this is a disease that mainly affects women. There's a small incidence in men uh, and male uh, young, ad young adults in the sort of congenital uh, straining era, but the peak incidence is in, uh, in later life, uh, weakening, weakening of the pelvic floor, uh, mainly as a consequence of childbirth, and uh, the, the, the deteriorating perineum uh, with age. The findings are, are pretty constant. Uh, an intersusception, which at one time was only really recognized as when it was a full external prolapse, but we now understand uh, the intersusception of staying within the rectum, uh, with the rectum uh, intersecting into itself without any external visible prolapse. Uniformly a deep pouch of Douglas and uh, the fixation of the rectum to the uh, pelvis is poor. Almost always the sigmoid is very redundant and the sphincters and pelvic floor are often uh, very poor quality muscle through repeated uh, str straining. I'm just going to uh, review things uh, overall and as so many things, uh, uh, this is different on the two sides of the Atlantic. This uh, international survey of uh, nearly 400 patients in over 50 countries uh, demonstrated the differences between the two sides of the Atlantic, that uh, lap uh, ventral rectopexy was most popular in Europe and resection rectopexy most popular in the USA. Um, I think in England for a long time perineal techniques were most popular um, despite the fact that they tend to have a very high uh, recurrence rate. And there's some interest in Europe in the staple transanal uh, rectal resection, um, but it, at the moment is still uh, ventral rectopexia that is the predominant uh, operation today. It doesn't seem to have a. So, just going through some of the recent experience uh, sutured rectopexia without mesh, 70 patients, all but one female with a substantially good follow up for four years, improvement in the continence scores. There's still quite a lot of constipation postoperatively and almost 10% recurrence. Am I jumping, sir? Um, rectopexy with mesh, a big series, 10% uh, um, in, in men. Still lost quite a lot of constipation, 17%, but a low incidence of recurrence in this group, though one case of erosion. Again, no mortality. Biologics have also been, been used for uh, uh, lap ventral rectopexy, a series of 65 uh, permacole meshes, no erosion in this, um, but again, good improvement in the continence scores, and in this series, much less constipation than the preceding ones. In another uh, biologic series, uh, the, no mesh erosion, markedly improved uh, incontinence uh, and constipation scores, much less constipation than in the fixation rectopexy, um, but still uh, some recurrence, 6%, not nearly as much as the perineal procedures. Incontinence is also, I think, part of the, the mixture of uh, symptoms that these patients suffer after rectopexy. Um, it's uh, improved with the, uh, with the ventral approach more than the, uh, the, the simple fixation uh, rectopexy. 
can often be mixed, and there may be you know, urinary incontinence as well. Now, I want to concentrate particularly on uh, the operation that's performed most in Europe, because it may be less familiar to you in the United States of the uh, ventral rectopexy developed by my friend André Dour uh, from Leuven in Belgium. Um, you probably know Leuven rather better for its other product, which is Stella Artois, but both uh, that and André Dour come from the same place. And he devised this operation in the early part of uh, this uh, millennium. And the, th the thesis of his approach was to, uh, to deal with what he saw as the, the components of, of rectal prolapse. So first of all, to deal with the full thickness intersusception, to get rid of the uh, concomitant entry seal in the pouch of Douglas, but preserve the rectal ampulla in as near normal a state as, as possible while avoiding any nerve damage. And finally, to make an operation not, that, that was not confined to, to uh, the pioneer that uh, an only, only I can do operation, but an operation that was sufficiently straightforward for, for others to take up. And uh, what it aims to do is to uh, restore the support to the vagina and distal rectum at all, three, at all three levels. So uh, in the uh, uterosacral complex, uh, the, the rectovaginal septum itself, and also uh, the perineal body. So uh, for the surgery, the surgeon stands on the right, the assistant on the left, and uh, the patient, as you'd expect, in a modified Lloyd Davis head down position. So the first part of uh, the incision is to uh, incise the uh, peritoneal reflection, but without mobilizing the rectum, just to gain access to the, uh, the, the pararectal space, pointing out the ureter here. and just opening the, opening the peritoneum to get in behind. There, the, the sacral promontory is exposed. And he's pointing out where he's going to make the anterior access incision. So the next step is then to dissect down into the uh, space between the rectum and the vagina. Uh, and this is um, to expose the anterior rectal wall onto which the uh, strip of uh, mesh to support the uh, posterior vaginal wall and the anterior rectal wall will be attached. This is finally taking us down to expose the, the bare anterior rectal wall uh, prior to attachment of the mesh, as you can see in the diagram on the, on the left. And this is the uh, 
some of the most the more tedious part of the operation there, the mesh is in place, and uh, there's quite a lot of suturing involved, so if you're going to embark on, on uh, lap ventral rectopexy, you need to be a proficient suturer, either with internal uh, knotting or using a knot pusher, as is seen in this, in this video. But uh, something in the order of six, six to eight sutures are going to be required to be placed deep in the pelvis to attach the uh, mesh to the rectal wall. So with the mesh uh, securely attached to the rectum, the uh, next step is to make the buzzer work and uh, bring the upper end of the mesh up onto the sacral promontory. And so this is drawing the, the, the whole uh, pelvic floor upwards and then uh, this is then uh, fixed, in, fixed in place to support the vagina and rectum. And this is being fixed with a, a stapler and some sutures. And then finally, the peritoneum. If I will just skip slightly further on. The, the mesh is trimmed and and then the peritoneum can be closed over. So very little mobilization of the uh, rectum itself just to gain access to the promontory and to the anterior rectal wall. Uh, in terms of operating time, it really depends how good you are and how quick you are at suturing, but it's something in the order of an hour and a half to two hours. And with this uh, technique, one of the, I think one of the principal benefits seems to be a marked reduction in post-operative constipation. Um, this is from Andre Dewar's own series. And uh, a significant influence on uh, obstructive defecation, more so than, uh, than, than on slow transit constipation. But, but uh, the functional results have been extremely, uh, extremely good in avoiding constipation. Perhaps a little unclear is why the colonic transit time uh, reduces uh, significantly when the operation is confined to the rectum, uh, but that was a serendipitous uh, finding in this, in this series. One of the things that uh, Andre was very keen was that this operation was going to be reproducible, and uh, uh, this shows a comparison of results from Leuven, uh, his own series, uh, from uh, Ian Lindsay's group in Oxford and Tony uh, Dixon's group in Bristol, all with a very similar outcome. So it doesn't seem to be dependent uh, on being the originator to achieve uh, the very satisfactory results in terms of uh, the functional outcome. So in conclusion, uh, the European view is very much that laparoscopic ventral rectopexy is the preferred uh, 